I was just looking this morning, funnily enough, at, uh, at the various different things that happened over the course of the last 12 months. And even if I just read you three or four entries that I've got here, 15th of January, the first meaningful vote is held on the withdrawal agreement in the UK House of Commons. The UK government is defeated by 432 votes to Dude, 202. 202. I good. got that right in a quiz, in a quiz question. Well done. In a, that is in a brilliant. Quiz. 12th of March, see if you know this one, the second meaningful vote on the withdrawal no, agreement is the UK government is defeated again <laughs> by 391 <laughs> votes to 242. It goes on and on and on. There's about 25 of these various different meaningful votes I was here. there, Mike. We were all there. And, I mean, it now seems almost like a dream, doesn't it? Yeah. Because nobody's talking about it anymore. I was in Scotland over Christmas. Not one person mentioned the word Brexit to me. No, um, that's right. Very few of them even mentioned the word Scottish independence, funnily enough. But that's another story. But, I mean, it's been quite a year, hasn't it? I mean, it really, even for those of us who have been doing this for a while, it was quite remarkable. Yeah, it was. It was just an astonishing year. Mm. And, you know, bringing to the end uh, an astonishing... Astonishing uh, uh, time of Theresa May's uh, uh, premiership yeah. because I mean that was just three wasted years as it, uh, you know looking back. Um, I mean it's hard to imagine anything else that's happened. I mean I'm trying no, to think of, right. of, of certainly in the past twelve months of any kind of serious legislation that's been put through about anything. And I can't think of anything. They did vote on something that wasn't Brexit right. at some point, but I can't remember what it was. You're yeah. absolutely right. I mean, I, I remember sort of them talking about the domestic violence bill towards the end of the year, but I, I, I don't even know what's happened to that. I think no. it's, it's out there somewhere having a second reading in the ether. But, I mean, I can't think of that's really right. anything that's no, but The only thing I can remember was when the alternative Prime Minister, Stella Creasy, a uh, Labour backbencher, oh, yeah. actually managed to amend a piece of legislation to to allow um, people in Northern Ireland to obtain ab abortions in, uh, yes. okay. in in Great Britain. Right. So, I mean, that wasn't even the government doing it. That mm. was a backbencher right. um, amending amending a law, uh, much to the embarrassment of the DUP. I was going to say, the people who were the, sort of, uh, the, 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 the coalition government at one point, which also now seems a very long time ago, doesn't it? Indeed. And, and when you see one of, their for one of their former kind of leading lights losing his seat as well, and nobody really caring... Who's you know, that? Um, well, wasn't it uh, Dodds, wasn't it, that lost his seat? Oh, sorry, yes, in absolutely. The DUP. Yes. And suddenly, you know, if that had been, say, six months earlier, there would have been all sorts of pieces written about how important it was, and now it's apparently yeah. not important at all. Well, no, I mean, the, <laughs> the Northern Ireland uh, election result was was much overlooked in the rest of uh, yeah. the United Kingdom. It was very interesting because we had uh, the, the SDLP, that's uh, Labour's sister party, mm. back with two MPs, and we also had an MP back from the Alliance Party, which yes. is a sort of cross-community... Uh, and party, Sinn Féin is, presumably are still not going to take up their seats as uh, they never uh, do. No, they never do. So that, but that, so that's unchanged. They lost. I think they they lost two seats but gained two. So they ended up. Right. They ended up um, quit. Yes. So I mean, if you do look back on this with with, I mean, I don't know whether you've written your sort of treaties for the year yet <laughs> as to uh, you know the highs and lows and everything else. I mean, what stands out for you? Is there anything that stands out, or is it all just one kind of long tunnel <laughs> uh, of of darkness until the no, end? No, well, I mean, it all it it did, it all stands out because you know the first the first half of the year was just all that um, that deadlock in Parliament and desperately uh, trying to get some kind of uh, deal through. And I, at that time, I thought I thought that was it. I thought we were never going to leave the European yeah. Union. Because I mean, I think I probably said that to you yeah. several times. Um, well, I, I remember you sitting down one one time in the in the tent. It must have been around about October. And I literally said to you, I can't think of anything to ask you. I've literally <laughs> asked all the questions that I can ask and I've got nothing to say. And we'd all reached that sort of point where there was nothing else to That's say. That's right. It, it had hit a sort of complete and utter deadlock yeah. where nothing could, nothing could move. And, you know, I thought, I thought, you know, that parliament was never going to dissolve itself. It was mm. never going to vote for an election right. uh, because it was never in the interests of, of, of enough uh, MPs to do so. So that was that was the real surprise. Yeah. Uh, but it was never, you know, it was never actually going to agree to Brexit. So, you know, because the Tories were never going to, to, to support Theresa May's uh, Brexit deal and neither were the Labour mm. Party. And, you know, there was no there was no sort of soft Brexit that the Labour Party could put together that the Tories would vote for. So, you know, I thought that was never never going to happen. Mm. And what was what was extraordinary was the way that, that Boris Johnson turned that round. Yeah. And I thought, you know, when, you know, when he first, the first thing he said before he even, before the Tory leadership election started was, I'm going to get us out on the 31st of October, come what may, yeah. I thought, what a mistake. Yes. Because I because I, I, I heard that rationally. Mm. I heard that as a as a specific promise to do a right. specific thing. And I thought, well, you, you can't promise to do that. Yeah. You, you can't guarantee to do that. Certainly not with this parliament. Right. And you won't be able to get an election. And yet what 
the significance of that was he was he was laying down a marker saying this is this is what I really want to do mm. and I'm determined to do it and if I'm frustrated by Parliament then I will force an election and yes. he managed to do it and he managed to do it so I mean is it your view now that Dominic Cummings actually is far cleverer than anybody gave him any credit for <laughs> and he did actually really war game this as as, as the saying was uh, was being put around in sort of September October time that he saw all of this coming. No, I don't think he saw all of this coming. Yeah. But I think he understands politics uh, at a different level yeah. from uh, f- from uh, boring people like me who sort of assume that when politicians say something, that's what they, they actually they, mean that's, it. That's what they. That's You've been what in they, far they, too they long. Mean and to... <laughs> well, you would have thought so. You would have thought so, Mike. But no, I thought uh, I thought Boris was promising the impossible and that was going to come back to bite him. But mm. actually, what it did was it unlocked everything for him because people understood what he wanted to do yeah. and, he, and and that he was he was desperate to. To, to get it done, and that was, of course, the message of the election. Now, I mean, it was it was a close run thing, though, because I mean, I don't think there was some genius master plan. I mean, Dominic Cummings kept on making um, stupid mistakes. Mm. I mean, trying to and proroguing Parliament was a complete waste of time, and 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 uh, sort of. Uh, uh, just endless trouble for, yeah. for no for no gain because Parliament had already passed that law against a, a no deal. Except Brexit. perhaps that it all fed into this kind of um, exactly this scenario that people got into their heads that everyone in Parliament was trying to stop Boris from getting what he wanted to get. Exactly. So in that way, it kind of worked. It, it worked on that level exactly. But um, it certainly seems to have sent Julian Moore over the edge. I mean, he's now <laughs> battering foxes to death in his back garden. One of the more extraordinary stories of the Christmas period, I have to say. Well, that was my. I certainly didn't predict that one. <laughs> uh, you know the idea that an eminent eminent lawyer would be uh, w- would be in his garden yeah. in in his wife's green kim- kimono uh, clubbing foxes. Yes, to death. that was that that was not possible to predict. I no, don't think. I think none of us saw that one coming. But is it also going to be the case? Do you think that 2019 obviously was was where the logjam was broken? We leave the European Union on January 31st. But is it also as a result of the terrible election result for Labour? The kind of death of the Labour Party in some ways. Well, no, it might be the rebirth of the Labour Party. I mean, mm. at least we, you know, we have the advantage of getting rid of Jeremy Corbyn, yeah. which is, uh, you know, the first uh, the first step towards, um, it, you know, what I regard as as, as proper politics. Back for, to, from, back from, to from sort of normalcy. Party. Yeah, except if you end up with Rebecca Long Bailey and Angela Rayner. Oh, it's no, not going to be much different, is it? I'm all for Rebecca Long Bailey and Angela Rayner. I think they're. Um, I mean, they're not Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, yeah. they're they're not. You know they're not interested in Palestine and uh, and and uh, you know back in the IRA yeah. and Hez- Hezbollah. They're not interested in that kind of politics. They're not interested in Venezuela. Mm. Um, I mean they're mainstream. You know, I mean they 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 call themselves left wing and yeah. sort of. You well, know, you like completely to rubbished very, Rebecca Long Bailey's. But you completely rubbished her piece of the Guardian yesterday, though. Well, I thought it was so, an I mean, absolutely for somebody who's God help her thing. if you're the one that's in favour of her because <laughs> you've completely monstered her. Well, it was awful. It, it was, was awful. the worst. It was the worst. Uh, article I've ever seen yeah. by someone who, aspiring to lead a, a, a major mm. party of government. I mean, it was it was pitiful. Yes, uh, which is which is a big disappointment because I actually thought she showed some promise. I mean, do you remember when she stood in for Jeremy Corbyn at uh, Prime Minister's yeah. Questions? And she was actually quite good, and she's oh, got I quite think, a good. I think I think she's good on TV. I think she. I mean, I, I did a couple of interviews with her just before the election, and she's got a sense of humour, which yeah. helps. I mean, she I actually made her laugh when I said, "What have you done with Emily Thornberry?" <laughs> you know, um, and she didn't actually say that she'd done anything with her, but obviously Emily Thornberry but she would got be. The joke. A, would be a big mistake, wouldn't she? Uh, well, I don't know. I, th- I mean, Emily Thornberry's got a, got guts and passion, um, but I thought uh, I thought she and Keir Starmer were were wrong on uh, on Europe, yeah. trying to trying to trying to reverse the decision of the. But that's uh, the thing, uh, isn't it? If whatever emerges from this Labour Party, they're going to have to have a view. Are they not post Europe on on Europe? I no, mean, no. Their view will be that that's done. That's really? been, been and gone. You know, they'll agree with. You know, when when Boris Johnson brings his uh, abolition of the word Brexit bill mm. to to Parliament, um, you know, they'll they'll vote for that because um, you know Brexit is. Uh, they'd be so they relieved to get rid of Brexit. It. They just voted against the withdrawal bill, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, but but that doesn't matter. But once we've left. Mm. You know, we've left. They're not going to. They're not going to become the party of rejoin. Well, so the, I think that's. You know, that's fine. They'd, I mean, they'd that be is, absolutely delighted to get rid of that. That is one good thing about certainly social media has calmed down substantially, hasn't it, over the course of the last few weeks? Given that the Tories are now going to get Brexit done. Um, you know, all of those kind of naysayers and people who say you didn't know what you were voting for and it's all going to be terrible, there's going to be no medicine, all that's disappeared. I mean, somebody actually tweeted me the other day and said, yeah, right. has anybody seen any pictures of any children lying on hospital floors yeah. since the election campaign's finished? And, of course, the answer to that is no. Well, I mean, the, yeah, but I mean, all that stuff about no-deal Brexit is, is, is gone because cause we're going to leave with a deal. Yeah. I mean, but, but all, that, all that does is, is push the real crunch point 
um, further back in back in the right. year, as you as you were saying earlier. You know, I mean, at the end of the the end of twenty twenty becomes the next yes. the next crunch point. And, but you know, it's going to be completely different because once we've left, we've left. Yes, and and the journey begins. And, and it may take a you long know, then, time. Then there are complicated arguments about the trade the mm. trade deal. What kind of trade deal it is? You know, do we have a sort of do we have another no deal Brexit yeah. sort of crunch? But you know, well, there are different those, arguments once you're out of the yes, EU. We could have one of those every month, really, couldn't we? We, we could, could have a cliff edge every month if you want one, just for old time's <laughs> sake. You know, what's this month's cliff edge? Is it, you yeah. know, uh, the sheep deal or the, you know, the beef deal or is it the wine deal? You know, we could, exactly. We but it's not going to be the same thing because because once we've left, we've left. Mm. And, you know, the, the Lib Dems all agonise over whether to become the party of rejoin. Yeah. But the Labour Party won't. I mean, the Labour Party will just get on with, with, um, with, with trying to build socialism in one country because, you know, quite a lot of them are actually... Quite keen to, uh, yeah. to 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 have the freedoms of uh, of not being in the EU, mm. and uh, I think they'll be delighted to be able to move the debate on yeah. because you've got to remember Boris Johnson won that election for two for, because of two things: Jeremy Corbyn and 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 Brexit, and and they'll both have gone yes. by the by the middle of yes. uh, next year. Uh, yesterday, I thought just to be different rather than doing a roundup of the decade, I thought let's do a roundup of two thousand and nine. And the difference in, you know, not just the political world, but just the yeah. world in general in 10 years has been remarkable. When you think back to those days where Gordon Brown was still the Prime Minister... He was the most unpopular Prime Minister ever. Yeah, incredible. And I think he still, I think he still holds that record. I think, I mean, Theresa May got pretty unpopular, but I think it's Gordon Brown is still... Yes. ..was still rock bottom. Well, I mean, at least Theresa May had an election, which I guess, you know, you might say that he didn't really have until he finally lost one. Yeah. Um, because people were so fed up. But, but, I mean, when you look back at the Labour Party... Uh, then, even even with the unpopularity of Gordon Brown, yeah. it was a very different beast, wasn't it? Well, it it was, and uh, we were all confidently expecting David Miliband to be uh, to be it, Gordon so Brown's he. successor. Right. Yes, and uh, then everything uh, everything went downhill from. Yeah. Uh, I mean, from, that's from the other interesting on. thing that I'm reading about at the moment that, that the unions have still got a big part to play in whoever becomes the next leader of the Labour Party. And they're taking a long time. And Kevin Maguire this morning was tweeting, saying that, you know, it really is now time for Corbyn just to step aside and to do it immediately. Yeah. Um, but that's not going to hurry him up, is it? No, no. I mean, no. Cor Jeremy Corbyn will, will, will stay on. But no, yeah, the unions still have um, a remarkable grip on the process because mm. they still control part of the nomination process. Although, the, you know, in the end, the, the decision is taken by by the votes of, of party members, yeah. uh, including... You know, lay, uh, trade unionists who 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 sign up, but I mean that's not very many. Right. Um, but so the real control is the nomination process, and mm. uh, you need you need a big union uh, on, and your, then on your side. And then McCluskey's going to be the kingmaker or, still, presumably. Well, he'll be a he'll be a kingmaker in in that yeah you know, he he will be able to nominate someone. Um, whereas you know if you don't have a big union on your side, and there's only the, the, there's only one or two of them now, um, you've got to get an awful lot of local. Uh, constituency parties to uh, right. to nominate you. And looking at the Tory parties, as I said just before the break there, I mean, Boris Johnson has got the ability now, if he wishes to, to pretty much do what he wants. But what could go wrong for him? Because as, you, as we were talking earlier this morning with uh, the Migration Watch people, you know, if he doesn't get to grips with the immigration problem, which I don't think he can, because to me it's a bit like the NHS and it doesn't really get solved quickly, if at all... Um, he could have a problem with 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 the, the the next election on that, but I mean he's got five years basically, hasn't he, yeah. to do what he wants? Well, I mean the question is, can he maintain the discipline he's shown um, this year uh, in the party? Yeah, well, no, no, his own discipline. Okay. I mean, because as you, I mean, I think you're absolutely right that it, it's up to him to throw it all away mm. because he's got everything lying in front of him. Right. You know, he can be prime minister for the next ten years. He can he can be the prime minister of the of the decade yeah. of the twenty twenties. Um, if he doesn't uh, mess it up, right. because um, you know, I, th I do think something happened to him. Um, you know, when when Michael Gove stabbed him in the front uh, uh, after the referendum, yes. uh, and his his leadership campaign just folded, mm. um, just, just like that, like a pack, yeah. pack of cards. Right. Um, I think something happened to him. He 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 suddenly got the got the discipline. He's, he he realised he was going to have to work for uh, the leadership. He was going to have to uh, you know sort of. Um, you know that that's that silly stuff. Do you remember when after after the after the referendum campaign he went off and played cricket? Yeah. Um, he wasn't serious about about the top job. Right. Uh, but he is serious about the top job now. Yeah. And the question is, is he serious about wanting to be prime minister for a long time, wanting to sort of mm. emulate his hero Winston Churchill? And is he able um, to keep the Tory party disciplined as well? Because that's been an important part, I think, for him getting to where he is. He's yes. managed to to sort of scythe away at the people who perhaps didn't like him very much. 
Uh, he's got a whole new kind of uh, a tranche of, of MPs. We don't know what they're going to be like. But, but the they Tories, owe their position to him. Yeah, but the Tories do <laughs> seem to be more united now than they've ever been. Oh, absolutely. And, and having chucked out the 21, mm. um, you know, although, you know, we journalists all love David Gork and, uh, and Ken Clark and all the rest of them. Speak for yourself. You know. <laughs> I didn't love David they... Gork at all. <clears throat> Well, I thought he was. I, I think he's magnificent. I thought he was the star of the of the general election really? campaign. Those campaign videos, yeah, uh, with his dad, I thought mm. were absolutely magnificent. I loved his anyway. kind of. You know, we're all out together. Uh, you know, fighting the big the big fight. And there was about five people so standing <laughs> outside a shop, and you're going to go. Nah, it's not quite working. For but me. the point is that by expelling that lot, I mean, I think uh, Boris Johnson did show that he had a bit of steel. Yeah, and there was a bit of uh, discipline. Uh, that he was going to impose on the sure. party, and that people who want to get on in the party are going to have to mind their p's yes. and q's, and uh, you know all that stuff, you know under under Theresa May, where pretty much people were allowed to do pretty much yeah. what they wanted, yeah. including it was him. Sort of open warfare, you know wasn't that's it? that's gone. And, yeah, really. you know we've got, we're now back to normal politics, where a government has a majority and will maintain it by uh, by. And what about Scotland? Whips. Does Scotland have a part to play here, or is he just going to keep ignoring Nicola Sturgeon's calls for a referendum? I think Nicola Sturgeon's in a very difficult position now because um, once we've left the European Union, um, the SNP's uh, argument for, a refer for, for another independence referendum is going to be um, we want independence. Uh, we want to keep the pound. We want to keep the BBC and the Queen. And the Queen, um, yeah. But we're going to apply to rejoin the mm. European Union, right. and that's a much that's going to be much harder to economically. To sell to the it people. doesn't make any sense, and I can't even see the EU being in favour of it. Can you? Well, that's the question. Yeah. Well, what is the EU's attitude to Scotland applying to rejoin? Yeah. Um, uh, as an independent country. In my we sort do... of darker moments, I imagine a kind of Catalonia situation where well. where we start locking up people from the SNP. And, <laughs> and you know, the, the, special, the special boat service goes up and starts kind of cracking people on the head with batons. No, we and, don't, and, do, and we don't EU, do that. And the EU doesn't do anything about it, because that's what's happening in Catalonia. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and all that does is uh, is inflame the, uh, the, the flames of nationalism. Right. I mean, it's, it's hard enough... Um, uh, not inflaming uh, Scottish nationalism yeah. by by you know actually treating them respectfully and and, yeah. and, and democratically. And I, mean, I, say, I say them because I'm I'm part Scottish myself. Yeah, me too. But I mean, you know, the, you know I'm tr I'm saying we tr we treat the SNP with respect and give it all the yeah. sort of democratic uh, leeway it wants. And you know, it lost a referendum and it now wants to have another one. But so I was I was up there at Christmas and there was a lot of people I spoke to who were not keen at all on Nicola Sturgeon, not no. keen on the way that the SNP is running the country, and in fact are, are, are moving further away from the independence that they thought they wanted and would now rather stay with the, with the UK because they want to see how post-Brexit things are going to turn out. Well, I hope that's true, but um, the opinion polls are not at all, uh, are not no, at all comfortable they, from, no, my, from not. my point of view. I mean, you know, it, it, it was, it, they lost by 45%, yeah. and it's now 50-50 yeah. in the opinion polls. But, I mean, I do think... But I think that, that once, doesn't quite tell the whole story. No, I think once you focus people's attention on, yeah. the, difficult, on, on, the, on the economic cost mm. of, of uh, breaking up the union, I mean, Scotland would be poorer in the short term yeah. without a shadow of a doubt, and I don't think that point was really driven home and the thing that I got a lot of, uh, particularly on the West Coast uh, where I was staying, is that, you know, having seen uh, all the arguments about Northern Ireland and the border, they don't actually know what a border would look like no. in Scotland. That's and right. would there be a hard border? I mean, would there not be a hard border? How would that all work? Well, yeah. exactly. And there would be negotiations with, uh, the, with the rest of the UK... Um, just as as we've had negotiations mm. with the EU over the terms of our withdrawal, yeah. and then you know there'd be there'd be demands for a second or a third referendum in in Scotland's case, right. you know, on the terms of, on the terms of that deal. Absolutely yeah. right. And what about Europe? Because that's going to be interesting as well. Because I was looking at something uh, the other week, which showed that all in all the countries of, of the European Union, the sort of left and centre left parties are losing votes hand over fist, and they're at all time lows in terms of their their ability to get votes from people. Um, and you'd have to yeah. say that without the UK, the, the European Union is a much weaker organisation, isn't it? It is. It's a disaster for the European Union. Mm. And it was interesting that um, you, you had Mr Timmermans was uh, sending us that love letter saying, yes. uh, you know, do come back any time. Mm. Uh, a bit late now. I mean, they should have thought of that well, when, they should have done. when they were negotiating with David Cameron. To, to, to I think they genuinely expected it not to happen. Somehow. No, I think I think I think they do. They they thought it was going to happen, but they hadn't really come to terms with how mm. bad it how bad it is for the for the EU. I right. think that is absolutely true. Yeah, because financially they're going to be suffering uh, yeah. from the amounts of money. You know, it's also now that possible that, and as as the Brexit Party actually said that that basically we 
are now in sort of direct competition with the EU in terms of getting companies to come and base themselves here, yeah. in terms of all of all of the trade deals that are going to be done around the world. You know, it's the EU or it's the UK if you want to locate here. Yeah, well, I, th I suspect we'll come off worst on, on, well, on that one in, in, in many respects. Yeah. But you know, it's not good. It's not good for the EU. I mean, there's, there's no question about mm. it. It's, I mean, it's a huge setback for the ideal of uh, of a united Europe. Yes. I mean, you know, you do have the whole of Europe actually in 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 a single market. You know, even Switzerland mm. and Norway and and and, and Iceland are yeah. all part all part of that single right. market. And now we're we're saying we don't want any of that, yeah. and we're we're going to be out of it. So who's your kind of person of the decade, if there was... No, one person of the chosen? decade. I was asked this by James Max just before I came on this show, and I hadn't given any thought at all. <laughs> and I kind of went, uh, Donald Trump, because Donald yeah. Trump has been a massive influence in the world. Yeah. Um, he's the, the president who's more, most likely probably to get another four years. Yeah. Um, but you may have somebody... At the uh, start of the decade, he was just an irritating uh, reality TV star. <laughs> um, now? And uh, now look at him. Now, my person of the decade, though, I mean, this is this is a British perspective, is is Gillian Duffy. OK. Because it was at the start, it was in 2010, yeah. in that election campaign, that she had a go at uh, Gordon Brown. That bigoted woman. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was, called a, was called a bigoted woman yeah. because she, she was Rochdale, worried. Rochdale, wasn't it? Yes, it was Rochdale. And she was saying, you know, these Eastern Europeans, where are they flocking from? Right. Which is more of a statement than mm. a question. But, I mean, right. you know, that was... She was speaking for for a you know a part of britain which hadn't been heard the people who took, have all put boris johnson in with a big well, majority exactly it took the whole decade for gillian duffy yeah uh, to be heard Interesting. because you know finally it was the the 52 percent in in 2016 yeah. who uh, you know and the politicians wouldn't listen to that either uh, but you know by the end of the decade i mean the decade is going to end a month late yes because you know J january the 31st 2020 is going to be when that when finally comes, comes to fruition. Fascinating. Well, it's been great uh, talking to you over the year. I'm sure we'll be doing the same next year because it ain't going away, <laughs> despite not. what anybody thinks it'll be a new era. John Redsall, thank you very much indeed.